Land of the Stars. We're back in Hollywood. And I'm like, come on through, Corky. I want to put my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Season 5, Episode 1 of Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. Like I said, we're back in the land of stars. And this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting because I can already tell you I'm not going to be very nice when it comes to some people that I really do like. Um, namely, K. Michelle. Girl... I had a couple of questions, ma'am. Why are you back here? What is it that you're actually trying to achieve by being back here? Just tell me that it's about money, that you, you're coming for Skrilla and that's it. Because other than that, you couldn't possibly be thinking for a moment that you're coming back here for anything positive. There's no positive impact is going to be had from this at all. I knew when the show opened up, and you were riding around town that you want some fuck shit. You are on some fuck shit, Kimberly. And that was the other Kimberly. Psh, girl, go ahead. <laughs> you playing games, Kay. You playing games. Right away, when she said, I'm I'm Kimberly, formerly the artist known as Kay Michelle. So now you the prince of love and hip hop. Is that it, bitch? All right, girl, let's roll. Let's roll. So that's it. We got Kay Michelle. She's saying that she's Kimberly now, and um, that's what she wants to be referred to as Kimberly. But I have to tell you, I ain't seen Kimberly yet. I saw Kay Michelle from the Rooter to the Tutor. You are on that fuck shit. And I mean, it's cool because, you know, I'm, I'm here for all of that. I like Kay Michelle. I've always liked Kay Michelle. I've been a fan from day one, when she was back with R. Kelly, I was a fan of K. Michelle. But all this crazy, I'm I'm being Kimberly, this old bipolar ass, schizophrenic ass bullshit. Girl, you just being you, and you on that fuck shit, and let's get it. Anyway, so we see K. and Bridget, and now this bitch is here is green. I said. Scoot, scoot. <laughs> you like that. You like that low, low brow, incredible She Hulk look. I, I didn't care for that. I was like, all right, I mean, if a bitch throw on the green wig, I'm like, okay, cool. But you done run up there and actually dyed your own, you done bleached your own hair out blonde and literally put some fucking dye in there. And use something with a blue base so you can come up green. Bitch, you, you girl. That is a fucking mess. It's a fucking mess. It's horrible. And it looked, and I will give you this. We've seen her in two different scenes. On the one scene, when it was straight, when you had it flat ironed down straight, I, I, I was able to stomach it. But bitch, when it was curled, you looked ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And the other big part of it is, that's fucked up. That's all. I ain't going there. It's fucked up. But anyway, we see that Monique look good. She looked good. And I was like, all right, cool. Um, then we found out that Brooke and Bridget are actually friends now. They squashed all the booby shit and all of that. And so they're friends again. Um, but what we found is that Kay has an issue with Lyrica. Some old shit about Lyrica was supposed to do a show for Kay. She showed up an hour late, and then Kay ended up being billed naturally. Is you know her fees like a, a money on the minute that she's late, and I'm like, nah, I kind of understand. 
I understand you being pissed, but that can all be rectified with an invoice. You know, transfer the fee. Transfer the fee. This is what I was billed because you were late, bitch. Transfer for make an invoice, bitch, and let her be the one walk around mad, not me. Bitch, you late. And other than that, I, and I probably would have just scratched her from my goddamn shebang and went on and performed and took all my money back is what I would have done. I would have invoiced them for my whole goddamn whatever she charged back and I don't want the fuck on without her. Ain't no thing. The fuck you want to have people sitting waiting, which is what I heard. People were sitting around waiting and the show was like bullshit. Anyway, so that's that. And then Monice has had all kinds of problems with Princess on social media. And it's so crazy because I just really don't care for Princess. Princess Princess makes my ass itch. She really does. And I like Ray J. But Princess, that fucking Prinky, she just, I can't with her. Inky Prinky, I can't. She's so fucking extra and always got so much shit going on. And then she's like this 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 fucking social media internet savage and she gets things going all on and, and shit's all we're gonna talk about it some more but she she didn't go sit her ass down um then we actually we did see nikki baby we seen her you know some more to say plastic as usual no biggie but it was her and princess and lyrica all together and then they got a new little hangout buddy paris how the fuck did you get your ass on here? If y'all remember, P Paris was one of um, K. Michelle's. Uh, she's a good friend of K. Michelle's from back in the day. And she was K's um, assistant who supposedly stole off of K. And you remember that from the first season of K. Michelle, This Is My Life. She was stealing. She was going all, she talked the, the whole season, this bitch was so upset with everybody who got close to K. She ain't want nobody getting close to K. Michelle. This, that, and the other. Oh, they're all trying to use her up. And then we found out, the, and this stinking fat bitch had been stealing from K. the whole damn time. I said, no wonder she didn't want anybody close. That bitch didn't want nobody either exposing her or stealing what she could get. So, no, I wasn't happy to see um, Paris because I can't stand a bitch that steals. I, I ain't down with no no sticky finger cunts. So I was like, not happy to see her. I was like, mm, I don't know how she got over here. Um, Princess and her social media shit, she didn't put rumors that, well, there's rumors out there that Ray J was actually cheating on her. So she done went to social media and blew it all up and, and, and blew up the spot and got shit all as a mess. And then there was this whole thing where Monique came out and she's on social media and she accused Brandy of being the surrogate for Prinky and Ray, and Ray J's baby. Who even fucking cares? If Princess can't carry and Brandy's willing to carry a baby for her brother and and the, I, a whatever, but I don't see it, like, that could be really disastrous. I, I, don't, I mean, that would be a really bad situation morally. You're going to carry a baby for your sibling? One little retarded one, huh? There's nothing wrong. So don't start no shit with me, you all out there in YouTube land. I don't want to hear that bullshit. There's nothing wrong with a baby that's built, that's born with a deformity or has any type of a mental illness, I'm cool with it. We accept them. We're going to bring them in here and we're going to love them all and we're going to deal with them. But God damn it, we ain't going out purposely creating any because you know that's wrong. Now, when you when you know it's wrong, you don't go against the genetics pool when you know it's wrong. Ain't no sister got no business carrying her brother's baby. That just That's not morally correct. And that's, that's when man is doing too much. Stop it. Stop it. It's not legal for you to be fucking your brother, so you don't need to be carrying your brother's babies. But anyway, okay, so moving on. Um, so all of that shit's going on. And Ray J's little guy, we seen him later on. He was upset, like, 
I can't believe Frankie's out there putting all our business in the street. I don't know why. This is how she gets down. You had to push the fucking bitch in the pool, remember? You pushed her in the pool and shit before you married her. She's been an issue from the beginning. But whatever. Ray J um, was talking about it all with um, Solo Lucci and um, A1. Lord have mercy. So Lucci is doing real well. He got a, a large shine on bonus for some deal that he got. And he actually looks, he looks a lot better than he did. You know, what a difference a day makes and $2. Because, you know, he always looked like he really needed a bath, real, real bad, and needed to soak and Epsom salt and some more shit. Now, he kind of just looks like, like he's cool, like he didn't have a bath, but he still could take and use a, a little spray of Febreze, but definitely doing better, definitely doing better, um, and he has a lot of things, got a lot of things in the works, so, you know, hats off to him, proud of him for that, that's good, and we've seen him perform later on, he, he's having a good time in his newfound fame, so cool, get, get the bag. Um, Ray J, I see, has lost a little bit of weight, so that's cool. Because I don't know what was going on. Right, Ray had a lot going on. He had a lot going on. And he had picked up weight. And I wasn't worried about it. I, I, I didn't really like the weight on him. I think that the weight ages Ray. When he has the, had the weight, when he put the weight on, he started really looking like his dad. And the sense he was actually, it, that weight put age on him. When he's smaller, he keeps that youthful look. So I like Ray you know, smaller. But either way, Ray is a cutie anyway, so it don't matter. But he's he's losing some weight. I see that, which is good because it could have went the other way. With her being pregnant, he could have really got bigger than fuck. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it goes one way or the other. But yeah, he's he's looking cool, and um, I think he's feeling a lot better about himself as well. I think you know all of that self doubt and and those little issues he was having. Y'all know the little issues he was having, honey. Y'all know them little issues he was having. Those issues were, you know, self-image wasn't really one of his things. So I think he's starting to feel better about himself and, you know, he's getting his appearance and shit back together. And with that is why Prinky's having a problem. Prinky's pregnant. His looks are coming back to what they were. And his little, little ding-dong is getting um, back to where it was. And he's using it again. That's the problem. Allegedly. We know Ray J. Charles. Anyway, so, all right. So, K. Michelle said she was going to sit down and talk to Lyrica because Lyrica needed to know how she was coming across professionally, that it wasn't a good look. You know, yeah, she was mad, but she likes her and they're friends and they have a relationship. Her, Lyrica, and A1, A1 did um, some records for her on her last album and all that. And she just wants to give her, you know, some advice. Well, Lyrica shows up at a rehearsal for K. And they're supposed to have another show coming. Well, that shit went left immediately. Because, and it was K. Michelle. It was K. Michelle. Lyrica came in, and I looked at Lyrica, and Lyrica, was, Lyrica looked good. She really did. I, I, I liked her hair. And later on, later on in the, this scene, K. Michelle let her have it. Was like, you know what, motherfucking storm, bitch. <laughs> you know, Lyric always has something going on, something big. Last season was bald on one side and all that big fucking red shit. And after a while, we got used to looking at it to the, to the point when she came up with her song. And I love her song. Don't take it personal. It's my motherfucking jam. I like that song. And the video is hot. Her video was hot, baby. I was here for every bit of it. It was good. I liked it. I loved her video, and she definitely should look into some acting. I think Lyrica might be pretty good in that area. But anyway, um, she had the big red shit. Now she's a platinum, and I can't say anything because I'm having fun with platinum myself these days, but I liked Lyrica's look. I love the, the wig that she's wearing. I thought it was sharp. I really do, but it is very much giving storm. I said, girl, don't you fuck with her, Kay. She'll be the maid of goddamn typhoon come and fuck your ass up, Kay. You better quit it. But she had this white hair and you know, she, no, she can't dress. I ain't giving her that. Now, she be having some bullshit on. 
shit on these, and the pieces be nice, but just not together. It's about the time of day. She running around thigh boots and looking real horse, you know, during the day. I was like, okay, voulez-vous crochet a croissant, bitch. But whatever. So when she comes in, Kay just literally, she didn't really talk to her like you would talk to a little sister or like you would be giving constructive criticism. She just started an argument, flat out. Kay came with the love and hip-hop bullshit, and it was Kay Michelle. I ain't seen Kimberly yet, bitch. It was Kay Michelle, and she just went the fuck off on her. Went off on her. And at a point, Lyrica was like, well, you know what? I, girl, I don't have this to do. And she's like, you know what, well, just fake it till you make it, girl. I ain't faking shit. This, that, and the other. In case, going all off, she's like, all right, I'm out of here. And said, I ain't going to be a fake like you're fake, like you fake in your marriage. And it was like, whoa, wait, where did that come from? It was like so out of left field. I was like, Kay, what the fuck was that? What was that? So you you insult her, tell her you know you write beautiful songs, but this that thing and the other. But I mean, she just went off. It was it was just it wasn't right. It was mean. It was mean spirited. It was very much K Michelle loving hip hop. It was mean. It was that old mean shit. And I was like, okay, you just made a scene, okay. And then Lyrica left out. Then it got really weird. Then they go, and Kaden got so exasperated with her bullshit that they didn't put, they're putting her on an IV. <laughs> and then Lyrica comes back in, and I'm like, okay. And then I guess Lyrica thought about, like, you know what? I'm not just like, well, let this bitch just talk to me like this on camera. Fuck that. And she went back in, and baby, they got at it. And then it got nasty. And, you know, Kay started running all up on her and talking all this shit and yelling and screaming and calling her a bitch. Then they were on these microphones. I didn't understand it. They both got microphones. So Lyric is like, get the microphone because Kay's like hollering over top of her. And they're going back and forth. And then the next thing I know, Kay went all the way there, baby, and said, yeah, just like you run around trying to fuck around with my big dick friend Safari. And Lyric is like, what? What are you talking about? I said, oh, now one thing, we don't know. Look, Kate Michelle being a liar. Now the bitch is ridiculous. Yes, she's ridiculous. God knows she's ridiculous. But I ain't never done that bitch to lie. That bitch tells on her and everybody else involved. So she says she's seen the text messages and this, that, and the other, and that her and A1 got a marriage of convenience. I said, oh, okay, Michelle, bitch, you better shut your mouth. I said, so what you saying, girl? A marriage of convenience. <laughs> okay. That was mean as hell. That was mean as hell. And that girl, honey, and then she told K. Michelle girl, some shit about um, some shit, but it hit K. It was like some attacked her singing or whatever. And K told her she went to shit. And K took her and Pushed the fucking stool over at her. I said, oh, now you try to fight a bitch. You got a goddamn IV. Bitch, if you don't sit your ass down. And you know you don't need, you, you're in the midst of, you know, getting your ass unpumped and shit. And you got medical problems. You need to sit the fuck down for real for somebody dip and twirl you. Now, you ain't, you ain't in the position to dip and fall back, bitch. It might be over. You fuck around. And they shift that shit you got in your ass before they get it all out. Now, I'm going to need you to sit down. But that just went totally left, and it was just fucked up. So shortly thereafter, there's a party that, that same night. Um, Solo Lucci was performing. They go down there to the club. We see Tierra Marie. Tierra and um, Ray wasn't fighting for a change when they seen each other. And Nikki, they didn't get to fighting or anything. She actually congratulated him on the baby and all that. It was shade, but she congratulations, trouble. You know, all that kind of thing. And then they were talking about how long it's been since Ray J been home. And there's some validity to the shit that Princess was saying. That they ain't all happy and it ain't all glamorous and, and groovy over at the place. Okay? So, all of that's going on. A1's in there. Then there's this stripper bitch in there. And her name is Apple Watts. 
And she's old stripper with a big old nasty ass, honey. I said, look at that ass, honey. I said, ugh. Big old, one of them big old jiggly asses that look like it's holding smells. I said, ugh, girl. Then when I seen her, I, I liked her little hairstyle. She had this cute little hairstyle. She had these two, two little, um, little knots, princess Leia like knots up there. And then it was like long and wavy and the hair was kind of pretty and shiny. I said, no, I like your hair, bitch. But she not real, real cute to me. Not at all. Um, and she had this fucking blue I suck dick lipstick on. I ain't like that shit. It was frosted and had like glitter in it. And it screamed cocksucker. I didn't like that. But her hair was real cute. She built nice except for the big funky ass. And she's popping that ass. But you know guys like that old shit. And then what got me, she was doing this little move where she literally was on the floor sitting on her ass. And the ass is so big, she popping the ass. And it's making her scoop like... Thomas the Toy Train. I said, oh, this bitch. This girl, you look ridiculous at this point. You're a motherfucking freak show. Get up. So she gets up and she ends up rolling up on A1. They having a little conversation and she tells him she's a rapper and a singer and she wants to try, you know, and he's like, oh God, another stripper. Just no respect for her at all. And then that bitch starts spitting and starts singing a little bit and it changed the dynamics. He was like, oh, okay. And she did. She sounded pretty nice. And he's like, oh, okay. And then she, she went back to doing what she was supposed to be doing. She started twerking that funky ass. And he was standing there and he started making it rain on that bitch because, you know, they like all that. And um, him walks Lyrica right in the midst of the funky ass twitch. I said, oh, here come a problem. So, Next thing you know, it then went from one thing to the next. Lyrica done smacked A1's face. I said, oh. And they blacked the screen out. I said, well, damn, I wanted to see it. And she was talking, and the next thing you know, she said, she smacked him real quick. <laughs> real quick. Popped the shit out of him. I was like, whoa, whoa. Well, child gave it to him. I was like, all right. So, I, <laughs> you know, she wasn't sitting on top of him or anything like that. This is what they do. Y'all know that. I was like, Lyrica, you, you're really, you're doing too much right now. But it's funny, bitch. She popped the shit out of him. She gave him what she wanted to give Kay. They could get to each other. So that was that. And then she says, you over here with this bitch twerking all on you, honey. And then Apple, I'm like, girl, are you supposed to ignore that and leave that shit alone? No, Apple was given this bitch is Apple, Apple Watts, Apple, Apple Watts. Girl, stop it. Stop it, because for real, for real, you know it ain't personal, and you ain't got a nickel in that dime, for real. Leave that alone. But no, she over there bumping her mouth. I said, you going to fuck up. But anyway, so that was that. He took her outside. When they get outside, he switches. It was really smart, A1. He switched the whole focus off of him, so she started telling him about what had happened with her and Kay Michelle. Now, what I didn't guess at A1, you're going to make me have to eat your ass alive. I'm going to eat you alive. Because then he tells her, now he didn't get mad. Now, and now, and you're, it's fine. It's fair for you to be mad because Kay Michelle did your wife bad. That's fine for you to feel any kind of way you want to feel. But what you're not, did, what you're not supposed to be doing is taking your ass over to Kay Michelle's and trying to check her about her fucking with your bitch because that's woman shit. If Lyrica can't check K, then that just is what it is. It ain't for you to go over there with K because then if it gets out of hand, what you gonna do? You gonna smack K? Now you be running around here trying to look pretty, but you not gonna go smack K. Like really? So I just I was I didn't know where he was going with that. You you can't go check no woman about fucking with your woman. You can't do that. Well you can, but you get what you get when you get over there. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. Trust me, we are. Okay, so we see Ray J later on that night. Ray J gets home. That motherfucker Sonya. Sonya Norwood that let herself in Ray J's house. She bad as my mother with a key, honey. I said, oh, Miss Patty, honey, if you don't stop this, take your fucking key. You keep letting your goddamn self in here, coming in here with your bullshit. So you know, come in there and she's laying down the law. She's pissed off with Princess Baby. She's pissed with Princess. She's making the whole Norwood family look bad. 
And I'm not going to speak to that bitch again until she does a public apology. I said, really? And I mean it. I'm not speaking to her again. I won't fuck with her again until she does a public apology. If, if she does never do it, then I'll never speak to her again. And I'm okay with that. I said, I'm sorry, your girl. Just, and that's what Ray J's like, well, mom, you got to. Done spoken. That's it. It is what it is, motherfucker. <laughs> Sonia, you're doing too much. Just like Miss Patty, honey, you're doing too much. I understand it, Ray J, because my mother does too much sometimes. That girl sits your ass all the way down. Your whole ass. All the way down, damn it. And was telling you I wasn't hearing that shit. Okay, so let's talk about Apple Watts. She got two little cute little kids. Um, she lives in, in, in the Jacks. Uh, she lives in the ghetto. Okay, which is cool. She got a girlfriend named Lily. Lily is, um, you know, she, she's um, LGBTQIA chick. Okay, she's the L. It's like, all right, cool, Lily. I, I think I, I like Lily. Lily's real groovy. She's like a stud, but she's real, real groovy. And the kids love her. And, you know, she's, yeah, she's cool. She's really cool, but she's really level headed. And she really spit some real game to Apple and told her, you know, you ain't had nothing to doing all that shit you was doing. You was doing exactly what you were supposed to be doing. Throw them lyrics and shit on him. Make him pay attention to you. And then when the wife came in, bitch, you back off. You back off. And you 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 get this shit together and you get the bag, bitch, and take care of these motherfucking babies and move these babies up out of this motherfucking ghetto, bitch. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Fuck all that other shit. You had no reason to pop off. Now you need to get your ass and then you get to Lyrica and you apologize is what you need to do. And then square things back away and try to get back in A1's good graces. That's what the fuck you need to do. I said, come on, Lily, bitch, with the truth. The tr and she didn't dance around it with her. Now, I ain't buying this thing. that Oh, she's just my friend and we ain't never messed around. Bitch, the way she sat you down, bitch, and shut your ass up and gave you the whole truth. I, yeah. I've been in the game a long time. Long time, honey. And, um. She talked to you like a bitch that ate your pussy before. But, okay, girl. Whatever. As long as you say. That she ain't never ate your box, then we're gonna go ahead with she ain't never ate your box. Allegedly. Okay, but anyway, whatever. Whether she ate it or didn't eat it, you definitely need to keep her around. Keep her around. She's good for you and your children. And you need to listen to her, bitch, because she's giving you the right information with your ugly ass. Cause she, and that's what I tell y'all. Um, Apple's not attractive to me. She looks exactly like to Tokyo Tony in the face. Exactly like Tokyo Tony in the face. But the bitch got a body. She got a body. Big old funky ass and all that. So that's going to work for her. But no, she's not pretty. So it's cool. Whatever. We like Lily. And that's the funny part. Lily's actually prettier than Apple was. But Lily's a stud. But when you look at Lily's features, Lily got cute, um, thick girl features. But she's, you know, she's a stud. She's all studded out. But whatever. That's a whole nother story for another time. Anyway, moving on. Bridget's ass, old green haired, green haired Molly, honey. Her and Paris, with her fat ass. And I'm like, Paris, when you styling this shit too? When you trying to call yourself pulling clothes together for a K? You look a mess in that fucking Marshall's two piece ensemble, honey. I said, Bitch, if you don't go get you a goddamn girdle, a spank, a body magic, and 12 pairs of socks or something, bitch, you look terrible. That bitch, she look like a stack toy. All that shit moving and jiggling. I'm like, I ain't, you know, I'm all team big girl. I, I, total. Yeah, bitch. Team big girl. But I ain't nowhere motherfucking jiggling, bitch. I don't do that. And I don't do the stack toy look, bitch. You need to get that together. That's the mess. You on TV, whore. Anyway. They're sitting there. They go to, it's, what's her name? Has the AD. Had a fashion show for her athletic line. So, Bridge is talking to Paris, trying to get Paris to fix what's going on with her and Kay. She's like, all right, I'm going to try. But if she says something else about me stealing, it's going to be on. Bitch, stop stealing. Anyway, so 
She's like, all right, cool. That motherfucking Paris seen Moniece took her messy, fat ass outside and called Pranky to come down there. That fucking stinking ass Pranky brings her ass down there. Comes in there. And I, and I don't know how they just let her infiltrate the whole little uh, shebang. Gets on the mic. Oh, uh, where's the, she calling her? Where's the keyboard banded and this, that, and the other? What kind of a woman would do this, that, that? Just literally calls Moniece out on the mic in the middle of this event. Totally put her frustrated. Totally embarrasses her. I said, this ain't going on well. Moniece and AD is like, oh, Lord, okay. They kept Moniece calm for a minute. Just a minute. Baby, I tell you, it was a short minute. You hear me? Uh, she took that shit and told her, you know what, this, that thing, and the other. If you want to see me about this situation, you see me in about two and a half months because surely I'm standing here and I'm pregnant. Don't nobody give a fuck. You're pregnant. Yes, you are. But you got your stinking pregnant ass up there talking major shit. And guess what? I don't know if they told you this at your prenatal appointment. A pregnant ass kicks. Just like an unpregnant ass. See, there are people who don't give a fuck about what the law says. They care less about what the law says. There's some people that'll take and kick a bone and that baby out of your ass. And Monice is one of them people. Because the bitch ain't wrapped too tight. She ain't wrapped too tight. And I would be willing to bet money that Monice is somewhere on paper. So she kicked that baby out your ass. How much time do you think she going to do? Some people don't care about the rules. And what you got to do is try to keep yourself out of harm's way. And today wasn't the day. You up there talking all that shit. And then soon as she said, uh, maybe I'll teach you how to be a good mother too. Well, you know, that's all. You knew what you were doing when you did. When you hit her with that, it was like stabbing her with an ice pick, bitch. I looked across there. My niece was coming with a motherfucking chair. I said, Here we go. Chade's getting that motherfucking princess out of there so goddamn fast. She thought it was cute. <laughs> Laughing and all of this. They put her in the car, Moniz. Then broke out of that motherfucker, ran off the door. They trying to get her. Trying to get her. Now, what would happen if she got to you, bitch? You got her hands on you, you funky whore. Your ass would have been tore at. Tore at. Baby, date, baby, kick clean out of your goddamn ass. And then what? Then what? Who you gonna get on and make a post about it on your IG, bitch? Who cares? Who cares? And then Paris, you're a friend? That ain't no friend. Don't no friend bring a pregnant whore nowhere to fight. That ain't a friend. And then you sit up and tell them, I, she kept like, would have ran up on me. She did. She did, basically, but you were standing there with her. You were standing there with her. You were standing your fat, tough, jiggly ass there with her. And if the security wouldn't have been there, <laughs> and you're standing there with Princess, what do you think would have happened? You would have got hit with the chair, big bitch. So do what it is that you planned that you're talking about you would have did, because all I see is you running your motherfucking mouth. I see you running your mouth. You're a bad bitch. I, a bitch that is supposed to be so down with me and I'm pregnant and a whore run up on me with a chair. I expect the bitch with me to beat that bitch to death. But you didn't do that. You brought her down for the ass whooping and you kind of left her out there. You didn't shield her. You tried to run her on out of there. You didn't even try to stop the bitch from hitting her with the chair. You was getting the fuck out of Dodge. You a lot of talk, I see, Miss Paris. Whole lot of talk, girl. You talk a good game. Mm, still a brave, fucking thieving ass. Anyway, moving on. K and A1. A1 took his ass on over K's. And this conversation they had, I, I just couldn't get with it. A1 went up in there. K stood in her shit. Yeah, I said this and I said that. And she was late and this, that, and the other. And the next thing I know, A1 started talking 
sideways as hell. Now, I ain't used to tear A1 up all the time, but I'm going to tear you up, A1, because you're ridiculous. First of all, you had no motherfucking business being there. So whatever she said to you, motherfucker, was fair game, because you come up in there with that bullshit, and that motherfucking can't gave it to him. You hear me? Told him your wife is spoiled, and this, that thing, and the other, and on, on, on. And the next thing I know, he came at her on some old personal shit and told her, you know, her her album was trash and this, that thing, and the other. And she's like, but you did some work on the album. So for real, for real, for real. And you 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 banned from the, the radio stations and all this. And then he starts talking about she was jealous of, of Lyrica. Jealous of Lyrica for what? Because Lyrica's independent and she charted for now. For now. Honey, Lyric is not on Kate Michelle's level. Not no kind of way. What is you talking about, A1? And then she told me, you ain't even no real motherfucking producer. You work up underneath somebody else, big time. Go ahead. What you talking about? He thought he was reading her. <coughs> and she told her her vocals wasn't good. Liar. You're a liar. I've heard Kate Michelle sing a cappella and everything else. We've all heard her. Who the fuck you think you selling that story to, A1? I had to fix your vocals. You fixed them because you wanted to. You didn't fix them because you fucking had to. That ain't nothing but some bullshit. Now, she, uh, she's a clown, and she's a troublemaking bitch, and her mouth is too big, and she's messy, and all them things. But that whore can sing. She sang. With nothing but standing flat-footed and opening out her mouth, that bitch can sing. That's her. And that bitch can write. And you, all you got to do is pick a genre. You, there, I, I, I'm, not, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to go for that one, A1. I'm not going for that. She is a complete and total artist. That bitch can write, produce, and sing. I ain't going for that. Not at all. And she does those things all better than your wife. And you say what you want to say. And it's cool. And I like Lyrica. But Lyrica not no K. Michelle, boo-boo. She ain't got shit for K. Michelle. You understand? You stop that shit. And then reading-wise, you don't really have much for K. Michelle. She says, come on, honey. Come on. Come on, honey. And put you... She put you out so motherfucking nicely. So nice. Put you the fuck out. And you still talk a shit. And then she told you, and then you kept on, you was getting to, you was doing too much. And she told you, wash your dress. <laughs> she told that motherfucker, wash your dress, little Richard. Game of shit was a fucking asshole. <laughs> She is. I love her, but you are so fucking out of order, Kay. She's a fucking asshole. She told that motherfucker, wash your dress, <laughs> little Richard, bitch. Now, you, bitch, that's the read. And that was the end. Bitch, don't nobody want to be, little Richard don't want to be little Richard, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. But whatever. She dismissed the shit out of A1. I said, oh, jeez. Jeez. Okay. Whew. <laughs> Not printer, daddy. Anyway, but this is it. This is the fuck what we got going on at Love Hip Hop Hollywood. It is going to be a mess. This is the beginning. This is going to be a fucking shit show. Thank you, Mona, bitch. <laughs> Appreciate it. This is going to be good. I'll talk to y'all next week. Later. <laughs>